Hey guys, welcome back to Dom Spark Reviews. Today we're going to be re reviewing NordVPN. We're going to be rating it with the 3.0 tierless system, which is my newest tierless system to rate VPNs. This tierless system 3.0 version has numerous improvements, like specifically looking for things like open source, third party audits, the number of countries supported, and overall, a lot of the other things already we were looking for, which leads to one of the best VPN review systems to date. Anyways, guys, so let's go ahead and check out NordVPN. By the way, this is not a sponsored video, unlike most NordVPN reviews you'll see, uh, just aiming to push NordVPN as much as possible. No, this will be an objective and fair review of NordVPN, so stick around for the goodies. If you guys do decide you still like NordVPN after watching this honest review, make sure to click the link in the description and pin comment if you decide you want to buy NordVPN. It'll help support the channel without, you know, making this review illegitimate. Thanks to guys ahead of time. Let's get into the review. So guys, as always, the first thing we want to start looking at is pricing, how affordable, how well priced is NordVPN. Well, right now they don't have a count on clock timer, kind of pushing you to buy the service faster, which I do like, but they do put that up a lot and it's something they're going to lose a point for just because I think it could be a little bit clear on the current price. And that's one reason I encourage people to use my links to get the best current price. But one month for NordVPN is a little bit above our asking price. It's around $14 um, if you get the complete package, but that does include some other extras. The standard plan is more of what would you consider just a VPN without the password manager, data to breach scanner, and of course, extra cloud storage. Now, data breach scanner, I don't think should be an add-on really, really, since some services like WeVPN even include it within the main VPN package for free, um, but that is something NordVPN is kind of pushing to get uh, more of an asking price here. However, if you do want a password manager and encrypted cloud storage, it's not that bad of a deal. And if you really like NordVPN, it could be worth checking out. As from what I could tell, they're pretty standard and work well. Anyways, in terms of the standard plan, they're a little bit more pricey than the average VPN, which I would consider around six to ten dollars per month. NordVPN is a decently priced VPN, however, if you go for two years, it's around hundred dollars for two years, which is our asking price, and the one year plan is under sixty dollars just about, which is also fairly affordable in my opinion. The three year plan it no longer exists. It used to exist back in the day for around $120, but you're going to have to purchase the two year plan this time. So the thing about NordVPN though, one thing you're going to have to look out for is that they do increase the price after the first two years. I do believe it's around hundred dollars a year, which is quite pricey. So they do get more expensive the longer you subscribe. One way you could avoid this is by every two years, just making a new account and getting another plan if you decide you want to go that route. Um, NordVPN could increase the simultaneous connections as well. They don't really include it on this page, but they only allow six simultaneous devices, which could be better considering some VPNs allow up to 10 and some like Surfshark, which is another kind of sister company of NordVPN, even allow unlimited simultaneous connections. However, for most people, six simultaneous connections is fine. I think the most I've ever used at the same time is around two or three. So it's not a huge deal, just something I wanted to mention. Next up, we could talk about the application and NordVPN's application has actually done some interesting things. NordVPN, I think, has made one of the most user friendly applications. It has a pretty good tutorial when launching it that helps you understand how to use it. Additionally, it just kind of does everything like you would need to without customizing it too much. It has two kill switches, which is nice, split tunneling, and also has custom DNS support and things like that. One of the cooler and more unique things about NordVPN is a MeshNet feature. Um, it's kind of like a remote VPN, mesh routing and stuff like that. Basically what you can do is connect a external device like your phone to your computer's internet kind of uh, system. So basically what you can do, for example, is run something like Plex on your computer, a Plex server, turn on NordVPN's MeshNet service. And you can do that just by kind of doing this. And of course, uh, turning it on like this, uh, just clicking this button, putting it on your other device and you could connect from the app. Once you connect, you have access to your computer's internet. So essentially what you could do is 
access your Plex server even if you're not at home. You can do this with tons of other um, uh, ideas depending on your idea. You know, I've seen people talk about how they can remote access and get the benefit of Pi-hole, uh, which is a network-wide ad DNS blocker. You could use it for games. You can even allow other people to remote into your computer to share files. So there's a lot of cool capabilities here and really power users like um, can take advantage of the MeshNet feature. And you can check out NordVPN subreddit to see some of the ideas people um, have done. I even made a video specifically about this MeshNet feature, showing you how to use it with Plex and talking about some of the people's other ideas. So if you're interested in the MeshNet, check out that video on the channel. Just look up Tom Spark Reviews, NordVPN MeshNet to find the video talking about that. So I do think that's a cool feature that makes NordVPN stand out. Um, you know, what else could they improve about the application? Well, a couple of things would be adding dark mode, um, giving more support for Linux users who want a graphical user interface on Linux. Another thing is they could add port forwarding, which is probably one of the bigger things they need to add to compete with something like ProtonVPN and some other VPNs out there. Um, and they could open source application, which would be a big win for people and uh, wanting more transparency from VPN providers. So that's definitely something they could work on. In my opinion, I think open sourcing the application, adding that port forwarding would be huge. Um, honestly, if they did those three things, adding the Linux UI, they'd have pretty much the perfect application. And of course, adding on that dark mode. So I would love to see those things. Hopefully NordVPN can work on those things. Considering they are one of the biggest VPNs out there, probably making the most money, probably valued the most. It's a little disappointing sometimes to see that they don't have the perfect application. You know, no VPN truly does. Um, however, you know, a lot of VPNs out there do nail some of those features. Um, so keep that in mind. If we're taking a look at speeds, I've never really had a problem with NordVPN. NordVPN has very good speeds. And in fact, they have some of the biggest uh, network around in terms of country support. They have 50 plus country support, so that meets our qualification and the speeds are excellent. What we can do here is disconnect from NordVPN, show you my regular speeds and show you how they're affected by NordVPN. All right, guys, so these are my normal speeds without using NordVPN. As you can see, I am disconnected. So right now these are actually really good speeds for me. I used to get around a gigabyte, but now I'm a little bit further from a modem, having to use more of a Wi-Fi mesh system set up in my house. So um, we're getting a little bit slower speeds than before, but honestly, these are really good speeds for me right now. Quite happy with that. All right, guys, so around 270, 9 MS, 475, 478 upload. Let's go ahead and see what we can get with NordVPN. This should give me around 27 megabytes a second download, which is perfectly good for most things. 47 megabytes a second upload, which is really good. Um, so let's go ahead and see if NordVPN will impact the speeds too much. Let's go ahead and reload that just to see if my eyes are deceiving themselves. Uh, because that's kind of weird. Well, I would say NordVPN is pretty fast. Usually VPNs don't increase speeds. Well, for the purpose of this video, NordVPNs for some reason are increasing my speed. Not sure why VPNs don't really tend to do that. Uh, theoretically, it could be giving me a closer server to the speed test or something like that, and therefore giving me better speeds. Not sure why that's happening. I've done hundreds of VPN reviews, so this has never really happened before. Um, but suffice to say, in all my past reviews, NordVPN has had great speeds. And this is definitely not a reason to think otherwise, but pretty cool. Now, if there is an area of NordVPN that needs improvement the most, I would say it's in the privacy section, which is kind of a bummer since this is a privacy product. Now, NordVPN in a lot of ways has the benefits of being a bigger company. It gets those amazing speeds. It has a pretty well-rounded application and decent customer support nowadays, and probably one of the best streaming compatibilities out there, which we'll touch on a little bit later in the review. However, as a result, I do think they have sacrificed some of the privacy capabilities of their website uh, because, uh, you know, they might need more advertising data or something. Um, but whatever the case is, is that NordVPN just doesn't do well in my privacy inspections. 
And that's because they have a lot of ad trackers, cookies, Google Analytics, stuff like that. If we look at their Exodus application, they have four trackers, mostly Google trackers and stuff like that. Is any of this stuff nefarious? Well, probably not. It just could be a better look for a privacy company to have a more cleaner track record when it comes to how their website is collecting data. Um, you know, data in terms of stuff like how you use their website and stuff like that. According to them, they don't collect any information while logging uh, or while using the VPN, so they don't collect logs. So think about that. If we look at, you know, history of data leaks or anything like that, NordVPN did have some issues in the past. Uh, they had a remote server, a private key kind of got leaked or something like that a while back. This was at this point three or so years ago. There was this pretty big scandal. According to NordVPN, no data got leaked as far as I knew. And overall, it wasn't that big of a deal. The issue people had with it was that NordVPN just took a while to tell people about it. It sort of looked like they might try to brush it under the rug. However, something on Twitter leaked about it and they kind of had to do full damage control. However, since then, a lot of people still like NordVPN because since then they've done better with stuff like audits and overall just being a little bit more transparent about ownership and overall the company itself. So if you really are optimistic, you could say that this hack actually made NordVPN a better product um, overall. And that is one way to look at it. Um, so overall, besides that, let's move on to the next section and that's going to be customer support. Now I did test NordVPN's customer support in the past and they actually have pretty good customer support. Having live chat and customer support representatives were probably pretty quickly. So overall, no major complaints there. Now, finally, we could talk about streaming and this is one of the reasons why I think NordVPN is a strong VPN in terms of its capabilities as a large VPN provider. Whatever it's doing, whether using some kind of residential proxy network, DNS tricks or whatever, it does work really well with Netflix. You could try most regions of Netflix with NordVPN and it will work and it will also unblock most major streaming services too. You could check out some of my past videos where I reviewed NordVPN's capability with Netflix, testing it specifically with six or seven different locations and they all worked fine. So NordVPN's in excellent streaming VPN service if you want to unblock your restrictions. Now guys, overall, we've come to the end of this NordVPN review. What is its final score? What is its rank in the tier list system? Well, NordVPN gets a pretty good 45.43, making it around the fifth rated VPN in terms of my objective rating system. NordVPN could improve by changing some of the pricing mechanics on their website and making it more affordable and using less pricing tricks like increasing the subscription cost after the first term, using less marketing tricks like countdown clock timers and stuff like that. The application still has room for improvement too, with stuff like a Linux GUI, port forwarding, and open source application still not being supported, as well as something like dark mode. Now, in terms of the privacy audit, NordVPN can improve a lot, removing all those trackers and cookies from their website, trackers from the application, and stuff like that would make a huge improvement for NordVPN in terms of privacy in the back end of their website. Customer support and streaming is fine, however, which means overall NordVPN does pretty well as a VPN since it does have a decent applications and really good speeds. Should you use NordVPN? Is this the right VPN for you? Well, it could be. If you're someone who doesn't care too much about the privacy backend of a website and you're content enough to know NordVPN doesn't collect logs, NordVPN is an excellent option if you want really good speeds across the world and good capabilities to unblock streaming services. It's a little bit more expensive than some other VPNs out there, but if you get a two-year plan, it's pretty affordable. And especially if you like some of those extras, it could be worth it for those as well. Anyways, guys, that's just my opinion, though. Check the link in the description and pin comment if you like this honest review. And I'll see you in the next video very soon.